Minneapolis. And we'll get, see if we get everyone set up here. So we're going live with Coach Tomas Capusta, coach and teacher. Tomas Capusta, I think we're, are we live? Hold on. What's that? Oh, Paul, let's, Paul's doing more. There we go. Oh, we are live. I think we're live. Let's see. Let's see if I can see it online. We're live on Instagram. We got a few joining us there already. We're just getting right set up. And then I think we're live on Facebook right now, too. Let's see? I see it. If you're all with us on Facebook, comment in so we can so we know it's working. But I think I see us up here. This is our first try at doing the Zoom multi-conference uh, on Facebook Live and Instagram Live at the same time. I'm going to see. I'm going to check the Instagram comments and stuff and moderate for that as well. And I'm just going to make sure. One more time. I can't quite see it live yet, but I see it live here. I see there's four people watching, so I'm pretty sure we're on. Comment in on face. Oh yeah, Say, uh, Sandy sees us. Okay, so I'm gonna make this bigger so the Instagram can see it. That's better. Okay, and we got some, uh, some folks joining us on Instagram live as well. Uh, and we are going to get started in any second. Let me check the Instagram feed. And then we're going to get started with, co with coach and teacher Tomas Capusta. That's better. I think there's hopefully there's not too much of an echo. Okay. We got uh, Allison that we had a few. Okay. All right, um, one more check here, guys, and then we'll start. We're only about five minutes in, so we're not doing too bad for our first time here. I'm actually gonna record this video too, just in case, so we have it. There we go, and that way we, uh, and we're live on Facebook. Okay, we're gonna give this a go. We are live here uh, with a uh, credentialed teacher a hockey coach, former professional player, draft pick of the Edmonton Oilers, and the director of our high performance program at the Junior Rain Hockey Club, Tomas Capusta. Tomas, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be on. Great to have you. And thanks for being our guinea pig on the first uh, Zoom, Facebook Live group call, um, Instagram Live that we're trying to do here uh, during this during this break, just shut down break. We also have the Herrera family down there. Wave guys, say hi to everyone. Hi. So we have some uh, Excel online uh, students joining us today as well. We may get another student or two on. We're, we're still working through the technology here as well to share some of their experiences. Um, but first, uh, let's, let's dive into it. And Tomas, uh, why don't you just tell a little bit about, you have a unique background in that you know, you're a former professional hockey player, Olympic team hockey player uh, that decided also to become a credential teacher. And how did that happen? And initially, you know, I know you were going the route of being a teacher in a traditional, you know, public school system. Maybe just talk about your, your, the reason why you, you combined hockey and education and why you're so passionate about that. Thank you, Ben, and welcome everybody. Um, it's my privilege to be on the call with everybody. And I would like to tell you a little bit about the background Ben just mentioned. Uh, it's a long story, but making it short, um, <clears throat> I always had a dream to play hockey and go to school at the same time. But growing up in the communist system, it was impossible. And uh, I was only watching from distance whenever I had a chance uh, about professional hockey, about college hockey in the United States. I really didn't know anything much about it. It, just, it was just a dream. I just thought, oh, that, 
awesome. These guys can play hockey and go to college. I, I couldn't even imagine how it all works, but it always stayed in my mind that I never thought, first of all, that I will be a professional hockey player. Why? And second, I thought that I had to have a real profession. You know, I never thought like hockey be a real profession. Uh, so I thought I have to have a job, even though I would play hockey, I still thought that I would job and my family brought me up that way as well. So since first time I entered the school, I wanted to do well in school. And at the same time, I was passionate about hockey and I just played. I never thought about it that much. I just played and tried to be best at best both of uh, um, hockey and uh, school as well. Uh, only later I came to intersection where I had to make some decisions. And even though I entered in Czech Republic college, I studied two years there. I, I couldn't continue anymore, play professional hockey and go to school. I had to make a decision. Later on, I, it, was, it became more complicated because I defected from communism to Canada. And I started to play for a farm team of Edmonton Oilers where I was drafted. And then I basically um, played only hockey, but education became a big part of it. I, I always thought I'm in school. I had to learn English. I had to learn other stuff. And uh, I felt like I'm learning. And that was driving me forward, not only in school, but also in hockey, just becoming a student of hockey. Um, in the end of my career, cutting it short, um, I... I I was finishing with hockey. I played professional hockey uh, for 20 years. And then I had to make another decision what I'm going to do next. And then I came back to basically to the same decision. I have to go back to school. So when we finally with my family ended up in California, I started to go to community college while, started, while I started to coach. And then... From community college, I transferred to um, Cal State. Uh, basically, at that time, I transferred to Cal State Los Angeles. And when I earned a uh, bachelor degree in uh, social science with history as my emphasis, I decided to go for teaching credentials. So I transferred back to Cal State Long Beach. And then I wanted to go further. I wanted to study um, master's degree teacher um, being a teacher, um, you know, basically a teaching education in my master's degree, uh, teaching English as a second language would be the emphasis. But I, I never got to it, but it's still my dream <laughs> to, to do that in one way or the other. And then I was looking for a job as a coach. I wanted to become a teacher, but it was really difficult to get it together, public, being, becoming a public education teacher, going to public school or private school and combine that with uh, my coaching profession. Uh, and in the end of that journey, I finally figured out there is a charter school and I, I learned how they do stuff. And I thought, oh, that's a perfect environment uh, where I can combine uh, my teaching credential together with uh, coaching. So that's basically in a nutshell, how I became a teacher and part of uh, Excel Charter School. And Tomas, something that you talk about a lot that I think, um, you know, that you're really passionate about is, you know, the combination of school and hockey. So you talk about kind of your own journey. I mean, you were drafted by the Edmonton Oilers. You played at the Olympic, Czech Olympic team. So you played at the highest level. But I think the realization, you know, for you as well, that the importance of, of hockey, but also of education and how they're both being very important piece of it. I know that's something that you, you know, talk about with your athletes. Um, maybe just talk a little bit about, about that and how you talk, because you coach a lot of times, you know, 18 AAA, 16 AAA levels, kids that are, you know, wanting to move on to junior hockey and professional hockey, maybe one day, but the importance of the educational piece of it at the same time. And maybe just speak to that a little bit. Yes, there's a couple of aspects of, um, what I went through. Number one, it's an experience. My own experience playing at the top level and at the same time, uh, 
you know, you can only play until a certain age and then you have to start all over unless you really built the resources, you don't have to, but only maybe um, 1% of entire hockey community can say they, they reach the top levels and they, they were able professionally to get at the point that they don't, they are really comfortable and they don't really need to go back uh, to, to have another job. However, even at that time, you just have to do something. And that's where I'm getting to like hockey. If you start playing hockey, hockey becomes your passion. You, you, you play hockey. That's one aspect. You don't think about anything else than playing. And then at certain point, you, you, you can't play anymore. Uh, some players, they end up after they finish their high school. Some players, they, they go to college and then they end up playing. Some players, they end up uh, playing professional hockey and then they have to stop playing maybe 30, 35, 40. There are some exceptions. They go over that, but very few. And then what's next? Right. An interesting part about it is that when I finished playing hockey and I wanted to start coaching, I started the Junior Kings, and then I I basically got my first team squirts, and I was uh, as I was supposed to be a head coach at the squirt level and assistant at the Benton AA, and all of a sudden you don't know what's going on. Like I I know all that stuff, but how to convey it? where to start, what to teach them. I was dumbfounded basically. <clears throat> and I realized I've got to start all over. I've got to kind of figure out how do I, how did I learn skating? What do I do when I'm shooting the puck? What's the best way to behave in certain situation and mainly how to train for all of it and how to make best possible practices, how to be effective. And since day one, that the, the journey started from the scratch. It didn't, it really didn't matter that I played hockey or not. I had to start all over just figuring it out. And that's why one of the first lessons I give any hockey players is if, if you want to learn really about hockey, try to start teaching somebody. If you are, if you are, let's say 10th grader, try to start conveying your idea to your my brother or sister who are sixth graders try to formulate you know how how do you do certain stuff but mainly it's not about square players it's mainly probably about high school players they they start thinking more how to convey various ideas how to learn so basically learning started from the first step i came into coaching ranks and it never stopped. It always builds up on itself and there's always something new. Even now we are in an environment where, which is challenging and, and we, 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 we try to make a best out of it. Yeah, and so tell us about how you found out, uh, how you got involved with the online schooling. Your, so maybe your role with Excel Academy uh, and, and how I can imagine maybe at first uh, people may, be more, you know, maybe you are skeptical about online schooling or what you thought of it, and maybe some of the things that you've learned about it that seem, you know, even more appropriate, you know, today with what, what's happening in the world today. Uh, maybe share how you kind of learned about, uh, about it and how you got involved in what you do now. Well, it, it started with an idea that at the junior reign, uh, we, you know, let's say we were building, we were building our program and you know I was involved in education and I was looking for an area how can I use my teaching credential and I was always curious about online program and I like many I was a real skeptic I I kind of listened to people what they say I had no clue what the online education is like and I'm sure it's different from one school to another and um as a junior reign, we started to have meetings with uh, the online uh, educators. And uh, I, I thought to myself, it's not enough. They are just telling us everything on the surface. And if I really want to know what's going on with an online education, I really need to get into it, become 
one of the teachers. So I was looking and searching for an avenue how to do that. And, uh, and because online school, particularly Excel Academy was interested uh, how, how they can also become involved in a way in, educa in educating athletes. Um, and that's basically how I got connected with the Excel Academy, but uh, it wasn't easy because uh, I basically had to look for students who want to become um, Excel Academy um, students. And uh, from the start, I just had only one student, one family, and then the word got around and the classroom uh, I was involved with was, was growing. However, um, I'm at the Excel Academy <clears throat> for three years. And it's it's unbelievable challenge for me uh, to constantly learn something new, and at the same time, uh, it, it just gives me so many other ideas what can be done. And I I think for athletes, hockey players, if if a student really wants to study and uh, has an interest uh, in educating, uh, it's a it's a great opportunity to be part of it. The, one of the most important thing is that students, athletes have to be motivated. They, they want to know things. And even watching my son, who actually went to private school, St. John Bosco High School, where he played hockey as well. I, I watched him uh, and even my, my daughter, who she, both of them are now at the college, but they were, self-educating themselves. Nowadays, the youth, what are they doing? They're on the YouTube, they're on the computer, they're on different apps, they, are, they, they learn stuff. Like even me now, if I want to learn something, I, I go on YouTube and I, I figure it out through YouTube, through online program and, and I learn those ways. And my kids are telling me, Dad, go on YouTube, figure it out, you know? And that's what I'm trying to do myself. And with online, it's very similar. You know, you have you have a teacher. Um, uh, if you are an online program, actually, you have a choice. You can either work, work with physical books, uh, where you have so many curriculums you can work on, and your your parent is your primary teacher. Uh, however, I am a teacher of record who oversees uh, the student work and submits all the work to basically Excel Academy, and then. To state of California, and I can go into details later. Uh, however, students can do either physical books with various curriculums, or they can do online program where you, they can choose with uh, several curriculums as well. And in those curriculums, you can have a teacher, uh, and there there are differences between curriculums, which I would have to go into details. But there are various options how to how to go about uh, online studying, but it basically became um, a great connection between my physical work and also uh, intellectual work, which is coaching and, um, and teaching and educating. And those two fields go together hand in hand because one of the most important thing about a hockey player is ha which we try to teach all the players and we try to make sure that they know that their mindset, whatever they think about, it's the most important thing. They, they can set up themselves, uh, they can tune up themselves either into learning mood or into uh, relaxing mood. It's really up to them what they want to do that, but the mindset of a hockey player or a student is the most important thing um, about it. Right. Thanks, Thomas. And I want to I say hi to everyone watching us. Still, I'm trying to do my best to monitor Instagram Live and the Facebook Live. We have uh, we have Duvalo, uh, Duvalo song, Nick, Nick Duvalo song here. We got Jordan Berterami. We had Berger. We had uh, uh, a few other. I think Ben Hampton was on. So if you have questions, guys, specific questions, feel free to type them in, and I will do my best to see them and bring them to, to Coach Tomas. Um, Oh, uh, Felena Davalos, how many of the junior reign are Excel students currently? So how many now do we have from the junior reign in particular that are doing the Excel program now this year, Tomas? 
in the third oh, year? Uh, at the moment, um, uh, I basically have 10 students, uh, which I assist as a teacher of record. And, uh, but let's say one family has a two siblings, another family has a four siblings. Uh, out of them are two hockey players and uh, basically three, four, five, probably six, six junior reign. Uh, hockey players. And really, it's really just in the kind of the beginning stages, I think, right, Tomas? Why, why don't you uh, maybe explain what your role as the you know, teacher of record and how that works for people uh, in, the, in the program? Yes, of course. Um, number one thing, you can read a lot of stuff about Excel Academy on their website, and basically their website is uh, up to date, it's uh, excelacademy.education. And you can read everything, what, what you need to know. And uh, for me, uh, I'm a teacher of record. And it's important to realize that with Excel Academy, the parent is still a primary teacher. However, the kids are basically on their own and they, they study, they, they've got that plan. Either uh, they have to, they have a different curriculums with the physical books, as I mentioned before, or they, are online, they have an online curriculum, which uh, they have to work on according to the plan. And these curriculums are usually with, uh, with the teacher. Uh, for instance, there are curriculums such as Bright Thinker or Odysseyware or uh, BYU. However, those are just just three out of many um, online curriculums uh, students, athletes can choose from. What I have to do is it's, I have to make sure that the students um, are doing their work. And I'm meeting all the students once a month and they are submitting to me their work samples. And I, I can also check their school online and see where they are. If they are behind and I have to uh, talk to them about it and they have to give me reasons why. Uh, I can tell what grade they are earning at certain point. And uh, I also... Um, try to help them if they have any difficulties. For instance, uh, with an online program, there is also intervention, which means if student is behind, let's say one grade or two grades, then they have opportunity to do extra work, which will help them out. And I have to set it up and to, to the best uh, of my knowledge, uh, which will help the family and the student to uh, improve their grade. And that intervention is available as much as in uh, brick and mortar schools. That intervention is uh, available with an Excel Academy and I'm sure with other online programs. But what I know with Excel Academy, Excel Academy put a lot of um, uh, stress on the importance of intervention, making sure that all students are served and uh, everybody uh, basically is looked after. Uh, so uh, I collect the work samples I submitted to Excel Academy and to State of California, and I'm creating three months um, assignment work record, which which is the shortage and abbreviation is AWR, and it basically captures uh, 20 days of every student work and. It, um, it correlates to standards of state of California and I submit it to Excel Academy and Excel Academy sub submits it to the state. Uh, on top of it, all, all the students are doing uh, state testing at certain age uh, and they do, uh, Excel Academy has got also English learning program as well and mainly WASC uh, accreditation which uh, basically secures that all Excel students get to top California schools such as uh, uh, 
uh, UC schools or Cal State schools. So uh, that's basically what it is. And I am uh, a middleman between uh, the Excel Academy and the family, and I'm trying to help them as much as I can and provide them with so much resources. And parents, on the other hand, they have opportunity to be on parent portal, which gives them a lot of resources, and also on um, an app called Parent Square, where they are receiving all information from the Excel Academy, and they, they can choose from a variety of programs. Uh, one of the very important thing is that all the students uh, receive funding uh, from Excel Academy and from State of California, which is used mainly for uh, educational resources and for uh, their curriculums. And that's what it is for. However, part of the uh, funding can be used for uh, their passion, which is, for instance, in, in junior uh, students, you can use the, some of the resources for uh, hockey related events. Right. And we had, so we had another question that came in that uh, do, the, do the students work at home or do they have any class work at the rink? Robert Berger shared that his son Logan, you know, does the work at home, but that they do meet with, uh, with you at the rink uh, and occasionally through Zoom. Right, so they do the they do the work at home. You said with their parent kind of supervising them, but there's a portal, right? And you said they can meet with the with the teacher as much as as much as needed to get extra help and things. That sounds like. And then I think some other key points that you mentioned. Uh, and then I want to get to the Herrera family, get the, get them ready to share in a minute here. But uh, the key points you mentioned, Tomas, um, was that number one, a uh, lot of options of different types of curriculum that people can choose. That that that's a pretty cool thing because it can be can be custom, I got my daughter here in the background, honey. Uh, on, they can be custom, we got the kids home from school. Don't move this camera. It can be custom, uh, the curriculum can be dependent on what, the dip, there's different options for people to because it's not always the same at a, at a, usually the school you're going to has certain things that you can do. And then the other thing is um, you mentioned about all the, the testing and, and people might have concerns that you know, an online school doesn't have the right requirements and things for college, but I know with the right one, with I know you've done a lot of research into Excel, uh, all the stuff is, all the necessary things are in place to go to NCAA, whether it's as a student athlete or as a, or as a, or just as a student at a college collegiate level, all the, the, the proper requirements are in place. Um, and then I know the other big point you just mentioned was the funds that are available because you're doing an uh, online charter school, uh, these a these athletes actually have funds that they can apply to their extracurricular activities. Hockey training being one of them, right? So a lot of these uh, these uh, students are applying funds towards their children's hockey, you know, teams or training as well. Are those are those uh, three kind of three of the main points? And anything else you want to expand on that before we get some uh, some feedback from some of the students here? I would really recommend everybody to to go through um, the website because they've got everything there. It's really in detail. And one of the main thing about Excel Academy is that they provide a flexible and personalized learning through customized course study. And that that says a lot uh, what what basically students can do. There's a variety of options. And the main thing is that, again, that the student athlete has to be motivated. He or she has to know that they have to spend about four to five hours studying a day. But once they are done, they can devote all their time to their passion, whatever they like. On top of it, uh, they can go to different field trips, uh, like. Herrera family, they go to a field trip twice a month, uh, for instance, and they can talk to you about it. And you can choose from a variety of fun classes, such as Gabriela is doing uh, uh, entrepreneurship or she's doing uh, visual arts. And uh, Excel Academy came up with a project that they have teachers involved. And not only uh, 
students can can be involved in online curriculum. They can also be uh, involved uh, virtually with the uh, teachers and uh, and with all other uh, classmates. Basically, once a week they are online, and and the teacher is kind of giving them personalized instructions. Uh, so. Uh, again, it's not me, it's an extra teacher uh, who, who is specialized in that subject. And uh, regarding the funds, the main thing about Excel Academy is that number one, uh, the funds go towards curriculum and uh, towards educational needs. However, uh, you know, there are, uh, the funds help student athletes to uh, really fund their passion as well. So there is a room for everything. It has to just be in balance. That's one of the most important thing. And for instance, if the student is not doing well in the school and uh, some families might think, oh, we just go for funds and we, we don't worry about the education, then it, it, it doesn't go well, right? So number one, it's education. Students have to do well and number two, is that they can use their resources for uh, for their passion, which in my instance is I recommend uh, hockey families opportunity to use the funds for hockey related events. Great, and, and then we have another one more question and I wanna to go to Herrera's next, so you guys get ready. Um, uh, Felena asks, uh, Okay, never mind. She says never mind. So they're, they're, when they're working at home, they're working on, th on their computer through the. So I think also you mentioned so Tomas being disciplined and you know four to five hours of study a day. But then, like you said, if they you know if you get up and you do that from eight to twelve or one o'clock, then now you're able to really focus on uh, you know like your training and development and things like that. So it could be a lot of advantages for someone if they're trying to wanting to become an elite athlete for sure. Let's go to the Herrera family. So you guys are going to uh, unmute here. And what I'd like you to do to start is just uh, share your first name and your grade and go around and, until everyone's done. OK, ready? Let's give it a shot. Uh, my name is Gabriela Herrera, and I am in 11th grade. My name is Joshua Herrera, and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Imani Herrera, and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Michael, and I'm in second grade. Okay, awesome. So we got a bunch of different uh, different grades represented, which is great. Um, how about the, the hockey players? Put your hands up. So we got two that are in the junior reign right now. And then uh, for the other two, do you guys, uh, what other, do you have other activities that you apply things, uh, funds and things from the school to? And maybe tell us what those would be if you have something else that you, that you do uh, in addition to your schoolwork. Uh, yes, so Amani over here does gymnastics and swimming, and I myself do swimming. So the the funds that are provided for us help us a lot, not only for ourselves, but for the boys as well, to help us do activities, continue to stay fit, and just stay active throughout the year. Great. And what were you, and so what were you guys? What kind of school system were you in before you switched to Excel Academy under Coach Tomas? Uh, I was in Carter High School, a uh, public school, and these kids were in Hubanks Elementary School. Okay. And what made you guys? How did you find out about Excel? And then what made you make the decision to to try it this year? Uh, we found out through my brother's uh, hockey programs and. Help. And yeah. we we saw the we saw on the website uh, that Tomas was a um, one of the employees that worked with Excel, and I told my parents, and I'm like, yeah, let's try it out. You guys want to try it out? And we're like, we're all like, yes, please. And and then and then we try it out. For, and, but we started late though, so we had to do a little catch up. Then we caught, we finally caught up, and then at the end of the year, we decided if we wanted to do it again. We're like, yes, let's do it again, and it's turning out really great right now. So, especially with the lockdown and all stuff, it like other kids, other kids, they're they're done with school right now, and for a couple of weeks, 
So it can drop the, a little bit of accuracy for subjects in school. But when you're with Excel, you, you can do what like whatever you want. You can you can go forward, you can go, you can you, you just basically are on your own pace. And that that's what's that's what's really good about Excel. And what's been so what's what's been the biggest differences you guys have, have seen? Uh, 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 you talked about already going at your own pace. You can go ahead. You can work ahead of time and things. Um, what's been the biggest, maybe the biggest positive, and then maybe the any kind of challenge with the also with uh, biggest positive and then the biggest maybe challenge with making the adjustment. Well, for me personally, it's been the biggest positive thing about it is learning time management for myself. Um, and then the challenging thing is that it was hard to get into because it wasn't ex similar to what I've learned in public schools. I realized I didn't really know as much as I needed to in Excel Academy, but because of Excel Academy, I've progressed a lot more in vocabulary, assignments, writings, and I've been able to do more academic classes that I wouldn't be able to do before. Oh, wow, so you found that there was actually like um, further academ academically than what you had available to you before? Yes, it's it was distracting in public schools before, but now it's it's very subtle. Yeah, because in public schools, you, you have limited time because they keep moving on to subjects and subjects and then sometimes you fall behind. And then when you when you get like homework and sometimes you guys are already tired, but you have to finish this, this, this extra work that you have. And then the next day you're you're exhausted because sometimes you can be up all night finishing that work, but while Excel, you even though you still have some stuff to do, you can you can actually uh, stay on your own pace, like I said earlier. And it, that's just the best part of Excel that that really can help everybody. And, and then um, what would you, how would you say it has impacted your extracurricular activities, like whether it's gymnastics and hockey and swimming, things like that? How is it, what has the impact been on, on your, your passions outside of school? Okay, Michael? Well, okay. my impacts are when we would go to public school, we would have, Again, like I said, limited time to do it because we still have to go to practice. And then and then when we get back, we usually have to finish it up. But the it, it has such a big impact to me because I do extra lessons to help me improve more on my skill sets and mindset. And when and because I have so much time in public school. Uh, it's a little harder, but with Excel, it, it's a little, it's a little more um, easier because you can manage your own time. You can make your own schedule and do way more stuff than you used to do in in public school because you have a lot more free time to do some other stuff if you get done early, or if you go ahead, you can, you can. Uh, you can actually probably take a break on a day because you went ahead so much, or you can, or you can do some other stuff. Yeah, and, and with our activities for that, it's helped uh, financially because without this, we probably wouldn't be able to continue our swimming programs and all of our extracurricular activities. So it's helped a lot. Awesome. Joshua, what about, tell everybody about San Jose. What do you experience there? The coding. The, the coding, the coding, uh, especially, uh, the coding was really, really fun. Um, what was it, Josh? What what happened? You got to go. Was it a field trip or what was this? It, it was. It was a competition. It was a competition, and it was really challenging because, um, you you have a teammate, which makes it a little easier to do. And the best part about that is that you both know different things. And then when you join those things together, like 
like let's say you were baking something and you needed ingredients once you put those ingredients together you make a meal and that meal makes such a difference than just the individual ingredients what's the competition about the competition is about coding so you basically make a robot go to a target that but in order to do that you have to tell you have to program it in order to get to that target if you're going to complete a mission that you have wow. Very cool. gabriella what about what about your visual arts tell tell them something about your visual arts subject and what do you have to do so visual arts for me is uh, basically starting off with the basics. So we learn about different types of pencils, the uses of it, um, how to use proportions and values. And it's been amazing because I've progressed so much more than I ever thought I could. And it's a fun experience. Um, I love to do it on my free time, whether I'm with the teacher or not, it's a uh, very, self-explanatory with the teacher. The teacher is very, um, uh, how would I say? The teacher is very, uh, uh, she's specific and it's an amazing experience. I love it. I also do entrepreneurship and I've been learning about business, the basics of business, how to build a business. And it's crazy because it connects to everything that I've been learning with my English and all that. Awesome. Well, any other advice, guys, for any other students out there that are considering online schooling and Excel Academy? Anything else you'd say to them before we wrap up? That um, doing uh, Excel Academy and online courses is very much about being independent. And it, it does take a lot from yourself. You got to have that confidence to really get through everything. And, you know, your parents are there to guide you. There's teachers and other um supplies that you can use and the financials for it allow you to get all those supplies which is amazing and in order to do that you have to do two things you have to work hard and have fun when you're doing it <laughs> right. awesome okay well thank you very much guys um tomas before we wrap up you shared with us um the website uh, you shared with us the website um, as far as Excel Academy, Excel Academy edu, I believe. Um, we'll post that website as well. Um, and then maybe, Tomas, is there the funds? I think I've had some questions on the funds here too. Is there a certain amount per year that families get to apply to their supplies and extracurricular activities and things like that? Or is it, how is that determined? Well, uh, yeah, there's a, 3,200 for high schoolers okay. and 2,700 for uh, elementary and middle schoolers. And out of that, you know, uh, families have to pay their curriculum uh, and school supplies, and they might even get a tutor. Um, and then um, on top of it, they can use the extracurriculum activities. And for instance, um, you know, for, for example, um, let's say one whole year online curriculum with a bright thinker, which Herrera family is using as well, all four of them from grade three to uh, K-12 uh, cost $500 to curriculum itself uh, for a whole year. But that's that's the most affordable curriculum. And then, for instance, you've got number about um, 125 per per subject but it's a curriculum with a teacher uh, as well uh, and as I said it's 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 the advantage of it is even with the Excel Academy that Excel Academy is providing uh, combined curriculum with let's say bright thinker and on top of it they can have uh, 
it can be classified as A through G classes, which is really important for future colleges. And they can add the virtual aspect of it, which means they will be connected with the Excel teacher. Let's say Gabriella, right? She was talking about visual arts. So not only I am her teacher of record, which makes sure that she's on track, but she's also connected uh, with one teacher in the Excel Academy and she gives them syllabus and she is meeting them once a week online and uh, have to submit assignments to her as well. And they are graded uh, accordingly. And I am checking the grades. Uh, that's just one other example. Uh, or um, not only they meet the teacher, but they also have to uh, make sure that they are uh, on top of their curriculums. And uh, it's a real, let's say, bright thinker, it's a very friendly curriculum, but there are other curriculums. And let's say Logan Berger, who is uh, taking also AP classes, and he's taking also an uh, honors class. Uh, so it, those, those are the opportunities too. One of the things what I wanted to say about Excel Academy, even though it's an online program, the school itself with its teachers and director is very alive. You know, we are basically meeting uh, in groups every month as teachers and we go through our classrooms and making sure that all the work is being done. So teachers are not independent entities. They are all together and they have to uh, sort of meet Together nowadays, we, we are meeting all online, which goes hand in hand with what we were doing. Basically, this time, what has transpired in the United States and California uh, kind of only um, motivates and challenged the Excel Academy how to improve what already has been done. But as the kids mentioned, you know, we, we are all doing the same thing we were doing before. We are con connected virtually and we are trying to convey all our meetings virtually to with our uh, students. Before, we would have to meet um, family and student physically at least once a month. And nowadays, and, and get their work samples, nowadays we are doing everything online uh, and continue doing that. And, and everybody uh, is trying to get better at, at what they do. And not only for students, but also for teachers, uh, it's it's constantly challenging environment but even Excel website is constantly redoing uh, updating uh, the information so parents can be informed and they are in my opinion they are overdoing it they they send emails to families they are the families are contacted by Parent Square. Parents have an access to their parent portal. The, all information is available, and uh, in, you know when even even now the enrollment for next year is on the website, and people can sign up, and there is instructions for it. And now we have even Logan uh, Berger join us. Uh, he is a, a tenth grader, and he can. You, some of you could see him training outside and outside, and he might share something himself, how he feels about. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I want to get to Logan. I hope we have one more question that came in, and then we'll, I want to have Logan share his experience. Um, the, uh, we have Log Logan was able to get on, which is great. Uh, one question was that out of that figure, that 3,200 figure, what, I know it changes, depends on the cur curriculum and supplies, but he uh, says, what's left over uh, or he's four, say there's four kids, what, what would be left over for extracurricular things like hockey after that 3,200? Is there like an average amount or a range you think that would normally be able to be applied um, to, their, to their activities? Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's very individual. It all depends on student uh, school record. Uh, and Excel Academy is very particular about it and making sure that, first of all, all the students are doing well. And if the student is doing well and doing everything the student can, the, the more funds the student can use uh, with the Excel Academy. I, if people want to ask me specifically, they, they can talk to me 
individually. I, I really don't like to throw the numbers out there because it's sensitive thing. And uh, I just, they can read it on the website, basically, uh, that high school students have 3,200 uh, allocated to their funds to use for their curriculum and uh, other educational activities they need to have and then extra funds they can use for their passion. That's basically what it is. And it's up to every family how they can uh, work with that and what's the best way. There are, there are so many variations. Some students, for instance, they like to buy physical books on top of online curriculum, which is possible, but it's more expensive, right? Some uh, students need maybe a printer or uh, maybe ink, you know, so that's another uh, uh, items they can use. Some students may need tutor, right? So, the, it, and same thing like with the hockey, right? They, they need to learn how to skate, so they put them into on a treadmill or they they put them in specialty classes, uh, etc. But it's a, it's a pretty good amount, you know, that they can use towards a hockey if the student is doing well. Uh, it, it depends uh, from student to student. What's the minimum, like if they didn't get books or a printer or a tutor, what's the minimum that they need to put towards their, towards their curriculum? Uh, you said like there was like 500 or something for something. What, like what's the... Well, 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 there are different curriculums, right? So let's say Bright Thinker, it's a curriculum. It, it used to be called Comprehend. Uh, let's say that curriculum might be in a range of uh, 500 for a digital package for a year. Right, so so the students are set up for a year with a digital package, the, and that, that package is open to all subjects, you know that they need. Let's say even uh, third grader, right? They can use this curriculum. Uh, kindergarten or first grader and second grader, they cannot use this online curriculum yet, but uh, grade three to twelve, they they can. So let's say they can spend $500 on this curriculum. And if they are doing well, you know, they are basically all set for the whole year uh, if that curriculum is good enough with them. And then they, they have a different supplies they want to uh, get together with this curriculum. So you can do your own math, uh, you know, what you can do. But there is, for instance, Logan is having Odyssey curriculum, which let's say Logan at the high school, he, he can have five to six subjects, right? So one subject, uh, for a semester would cost 125 so for the full year it would cost 250 uh, that's a one subject times six so you got 1500 just for the curriculum right but it's a you can have depending where the high schoolers is and he can be he can have just four subjects and there are different uh, pathways you know some some students want to have just graduate graduation pathway so uh, the curriculum can be less uh, intense some students are really on a pathway to go to ucs uh, and to cal state that's a more rigorous pathway so there are differences and nuances but um, you know basically there is there is uh, quite a bit of funds which can be used towards uh, physical education which is uh, for which can be translated into hockey training. Let's say uh, all the students have to do PE logs every month for me, right? So they have to document what they have done every day. So our hockey players, let's say on Monday, they do, they, uh, they go to hockey class um, to uh, Ice Town and they say they work on uh, stick handling. The other day they work on skating and they have to work every day about 40 minutes. So uh, they, uh, in the end of the day, uh, they have to have certain amount of minutes every day that they spend on, edu uh, on physical education, which is translated into hockey, right? And, and all the students, including Logan, he, he's got to make every day a note what, what he has done for yeah. PE. Awesome. You know what, I, the webinar might shut off in two minutes. So I want to hope, if it doesn't, we'll keep going a couple minutes longer. But Logan, why don't you, since, since we got you on, why don't you share your grade and how you started with Excel and what your experience has been like? Uh, so uh, my name's Logan Berger. I'm in the 10th grade. 
And uh, I started with Excel Academy about a year ago. This is my second year doing it. And um, I found out through Tomas, we were looking into doing homeschool programs and we found the Excel Academy and we thought it would work out uh, very well for us. So um, it, it's been very good because uh, for me, the schedule for our hockey, it really helps out the flexibility. So normally I could get up in the morning and do my classes and then I could work out or I could shoot pucks before I even have hockey practice. And it also really helps for when we go on our trips. Uh, like this year, we've been in Minnesota. So I got all my work done before we left. And um, it just really helps out with the schedule of, of mine for hockey. And you, I know you have big goals to, uh, with, with your collegiate career and stuff. And after that, with the, with the Navy and things, uh, maybe talk about it. Has academics has allowed you to choose the things that help you get to where you want to go? Oh, yes. Uh, so I want to hopefully attend the Naval Academy after high school. So being able to choose my curriculum and having like honors and AP classes really helped me out. Um, and I already, I've been to the Naval Academy and practice for the hockey team. And it, it's allowed me to have the time to put more time and put even more effort into going there one day. And uh, with the classes that I have now, it it's, uh, really helps me out for my application. Awesome, awesome, great. Any other advice you'd have for some of a young player considering uh, online schooling or Excel Academy in particular? I would say um, just to keep yourself motivated and that it really does help you a lot. Uh, it does take a lot of hard work because you're working at your own pace and you have your parents to guide you and your teachers and they'll help you. But at the end of the day, it's you're the one that has to do the work and uh, you just have to put in that extra effort and it'll help you out a lot. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Logan. I'm glad we got you to come on. Uh, Tomas, before we wrap up, I have some other questions here. Um, is, uh, oh, what, Logan, your second year with Excel, what grade did you start and was it a big transition for you? So I started halfway through my freshman year of high school. It was definitely a big transition. It took a little while to get used to, but um, after I got used to it, it was pretty smooth and um, it really helped out a lot compared to public school where I had some distractions and wasn't doing as well as I wanted to do. And transitioning to Excel Academy, it really helped me out and it helped um, just learning more. You saw your grades and things go up as well because you were able to take control over it more? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, they went up because it helped me stay focused on my class rather than like, you know, you have some distractions because you have your friends and stuff in the other classes. But the online and Excel really helped me stay focused on my classes. Great. Uh, Tomas, we had some other questions, more specific questions come in and stuff. Where's the best way if someone wants to talk about this stuff personally or things, what's the best way for them to contact you? Well, they can call me. <laughs> I, don't to, I don't want to take your cell number on the Facebook here, but what they is can, it? What's, what's they, the can email me. they can email me. I can set up Zoom meeting with them, which, you know, which you, email, you comfortable with that. Which email address, Tomas, for Excel? Does it matter? Thomas at juniorrain.com. Okay, I'll put that into the, the comments here. And then uh, you could I put the website and uh, Tomas's email address in the comments. So you can check out the web. I would recommend people that are interested, check out the website um, and then contact Tomas if you want to talk about personally about your situation. Tomas, any other uh, kind of final comments uh, before we wrap up? Yes, this is really a unique situation. You know, my relationship with the players as hockey players and at the same time as a, their, their teacher. Uh, I don't know how, how the students feel, but I, I definitely feel way more related and because I know more about them. Uh, how, what, are, what are their habits, what they like. I, basically, I, I read their work. They have to give me work samples. So I learn more about the family and the kids. 
and it, it's really beneficial for me as a teacher and a coach and uh, also i believe i really believe that this is the way of the future especially for athletes students are athletes and i believe that we're going to grow the excel academy at the junior in program and we're going to involve more and more people and once that happens we will be able to set up even more uh, hockey related activities even as a group uh, in the mornings uh, train more and then uh, kids will be able to personalize their studying time personalize their training time and it's just going to that was actually the original idea uh, that's what I thought it's going to happen, but uh, it's not that easy. You first have to build uh, the classroom, and when you build the classroom, uh, and and let's say group of specific ages, then you can start working more uh, on the training. Uh, but at the same time, uh, these uh, student athletes uh, benefit from this program really from many different aspects. However, again, I have to say that students have to be motivated. They, they have to know what they want and they, they, are, they are okay to do online program and parents have to be okay that they will become basically their, their primary teachers, even though they don't have to know anything about education. They have to, know, they have to care about their kids and make sure that they, they are in charge and they they, they have that relationship with their child, be able to, to check on them, how they are doing, even though they are in an online program, either through books or through computer, they can be still learning from physical books and they have to follow their, their program and their syllabus. Uh, they have to still make sure that, that their, their children are doing the work because me as a teacher of record, I can only control what they do and I'm not there, right? So. Uh, Excel Academy really puts a lot of emphasis on making sure there is still a relationship between parent, student, and teacher of record, right? So, teach, so students are not left alone, and teacher of record is, is not a left alone either. There has to be that relationship between school, parents, students, and teacher of record. Awesome. Great, Thomas. Well, it looks like the webinar worked, so thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Herrera family, for joining us on our first experiment with this. Uh, the Instagram live shut off at an, an hour, but we're, we're good to go. And uh, this will be posted on our, our page. And like I said, reach out to Tomas or check out the website if you have questions. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. I'll close it up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.